Hello statisticians! In this video we're going to take a look at section 2.2 frequency distributions and their graphs and look at some Excel tips that will be helpful on the homework and also on the project. First, for this video, I've got some data listed. This is the number of text messages sent by 20 different individuals. In order to analyze this data, first thing I'm going to notice is it's going to be easier to do if the numbers are all in order. They're close to an order, but not quite perfect. So I'm going to select all 20 of the values, go to the Data tab on Excel, and then under Sort and Filter, I'm going to click the A to Z sort. That's going to organize them from smallest to largest. And when I do, now I see the values going from 16 to 91, and they're all in number order. That's going to make it easier for me to do this next part, which is to make a frequency distribution with six classes. I've already got a chart set up to organize this data. The frequency distribution should start slightly smaller than the lowest value. So slightly smaller than 16, a good value is 15. Now that we've got the low value, we need to decide what the next class is going to start at. A good way to find this is a simple formula given to us in our book, and we'll have Excel do the calculation for us. So off on the side, I'm going to hit equals, open a parentheses, and we're going to find the difference between the high and the low value. So I'll click the high value, subtract, and then I'll click the low value. And then we can divide by the number of classes we want in our distribution. In this case, the direction said six classes. When I hit enter, we get 12.5. This tells us that the width we need, always rounding up, you always have to round up for the width, is going to be 13. So for the next cell, I'll hit equals, click the cell above it, and say plus 13. When I hit enter, it'll give me the new low value. What's nice about the formula by clicking the cell above and saying plus 13, I can copy that formula all the way down by clicking the little dot in the corner and dragging it down. For the high value, it has to be slightly less than the next low value. So if the next low value is 28, I might start this one at 27.9. That way I'm slightly below the next low value of 28. For the next row, I can make this easier by just adding the width. I'll say equals, click the cell above, and plus 13. Now I can click that cell and grab the dot in the bottom corner and drag it down to copy that formula all the way down. The next thing I want to calculate is the midpoints for each of these classes. To calculate the midpoint, we're going to take the average of consecutive lower limits. So I'll say equals, open a parentheses, I'm going to select the first lower limit plus the second lower limit. Close the parentheses and divide by 2, and that'll stick me right in the middle of that class. Now, since I know the width is 13, I can just do the same thing I did on the prior two columns by saying equals, click the cell above, and add 13. And that'll give me the next midpoint. Copy the formula down by clicking the cell and dragging the dot all the way down. Now we're ready to calculate our frequencies. For the frequencies, we're just going to have to count how many values fall between 15 and 27.9. I see four of them, then between 28 and 40.9, let's make those green, I see four values, between 41 and 53.9, I see three, between 54 and 66.9, I see four values. Between 67 and 79.9 are zero. And between 80 and 92.9 looks like we've got five. 
I can test to make sure I've got them all by putting beneath it equals sum, open a parentheses, and selecting all the values. I should see 20 values. Perfect. For the relative frequency, we just need to divide the frequency by the total number of values. I can do this with a formula by saying equals, clicking the cell of frequency, and dividing by the 20 values. When I hit enter, it gives me the relative frequency, and I can copy that down by clicking the dot in the bottom right corner and dragging through the table. The cumulative relative frequency then is just going to add the relative frequencies as we work down the table. The first one is just the point 2. Then the second one, I'm going to use a formula. Equals, take the total thus far, which is right above it, and add the cell next to it. Now I'm at point 4. Because that's a formula, I can click the dot and copy it down. Notice the cumulative relative frequency ends at 1.0, as expected. Now we're going to take this information and make a couple charts to help us visualize this data. First, we're going to make an ogive. Recall from the text that an ogive is made from the upper limit, comma, the cumulative relative frequency column. So we need to select the upper limits, or the highs, and then I'm going to hold the control key on Windows or the command key on the Mac, and then I'm going to select the numbers in the cumulative relative frequency column. That allows me to select two columns that aren't touching each other. Then we're going to go to Insert. And under Charts, we're going to select the Scatter Plot option, where the dots are connected by solid straight lines. Do not select the curved lines even though it's prettier. Select the solid straight lines because ogives are made with solid straight lines. Then I can move the chart into position and resize it. Now every chart needs a good title. I can double click the title to edit it. Ogive is a terrible title because it doesn't tell us what the graph represents. This graph is representing the number of text messages that have been sent. We also need to make sure there's a label on the x-axis and the y-axis. We can do that with the little plus to add a chart element and say we want axis titles. Now we just need to fill in the titles. The x-axis, the numbers 20 through 90, are representing the number of text messages, and the y-axis, the vertical axis, is representing the cumulative relative frequency. Now we have a perfect ogive chart. The polygon is really similar in process, it's just made up of different data elements. It's made up of the midpoints and the frequency. So we're going to select those. First, I'll select the midpoints, and then either holding Command or Control, I can select the frequencies. And now I can insert the chart in much the same way. Insert, a scatter plot with straight connected lines. Move it into place and resize. Then I just need to add the same elements to the chart, starting with the chart title number of text messages, click the plus to add the axis titles, it's off the screen but it's the same checkbox for axis titles, the x-axis is the number of text, and the y-axis this time is the frequency, and now I've made a polygon. This is probably the longest Excel video of the series, but it's helpful for the project and also for some of the concepts we're going to see as this section develops. So hopefully it was helpful. We'll see you in the next video.